alimony. Don't you want to get some alimony? You do. You got to marry a jerk first, okay? <laughs> Not such a good idea now. My son had a uh, woman he represented one time who was from Eastern Europe, and she came in and said, I want my $100,000 in alimony. And Nick was going, we weren't married long. Why do you think you're entitled to $100,000 in alimony? She said, in my old country, we watch American movies. We know you get $100,000 in alimony. <laughs> That's one of those half-true folk myths that serves nothing but to give you in tr get you in trouble because you don't necessarily get alimony. The trend has been for decades for alimony to be tougher to get, shorter durations, and lesser amounts. Uh, that doesn't mean we have not tried hard to represent our clients in that regard. And on January 1st, 2019, one of the great incentives to pay alimony goes away. It no longer is going to be deductible to the payer and taxable to the receiver. So that's going to give even less incentive for people to agree to alimony. But alimony still exists. It's in the statute in Tennessee. And in the statute in Tennessee, they actually talk about different forms. We've got different flavors of alimony in Tennessee. The oldest we've got is alimony in Salido, which is supposedly subject to mathematical computation. And in a lot of cases, it's real easy. You have to pay your spouse $100,000 as alimony in Salido. That's simple. We can actually calculate that. More complex is payments over a period of time and ridiculously complex to the point where it strains the definition of alimony in Salido is when you are ordered to pay your spouse's debts and their credit card debts. And you start looking at how they figure what is interest, how that interest is calculated, what payments go to interest, what payments go to principal. Uh, if you start paying it over time, what goes where? I really don't think you can calculate those from a specific spot where alimony in Salido is granted. But that's what they say in the statute which means either the Court of Appeals people are really, really good at math or they're just fudging a little bit. I think they're fudging. Okay, so with that, that's the oldest one. Next comes alimony in Futuro. And that's the, the bright spark in the spouse's eye who comes in with their uh, financially successful spouse on the other side and there's not a whole lot of assets but there's a lot of income. Alimony in Salido goes until death or remarriage. There are many people out there who are not remarried because they are being paid not to be remarried. Consequently, there are some guys out there who will chip in to the wedding for their ex-spouse just to get out of their alimony obligation, okay? so. With that alimony in Futuro going on to death or remarriage, you've got a long and difficult amount to figure. We also have an issue with that when someone retires. Then they can have a change of circumstance. Now, there's a big debate over whether or not retirement necessarily is a change of circumstances. Almost every, all of us realize we have an age, right? And it's ticking off every day, right? Right? And at some point, you're going to want to quit working, right? You say 5 o'clock every day. I'm talking about the big one, okay? You get to be 65 or 70, you go, I've had all this fun I can take. I'm going home. Well, it's not easy to go home if you're having to pay alimony. And then the in Futuro. And then you might have a hearing on whether or not that's actually a change in circumstances, okay? So, the legislature realized that really didn't reach to everything. And so when they amended the divorce laws a few years back, they created another form, rehabilitative alimony, okay? 
Uh, you got married when you were 18 years old uh, to this fine young man here. You picked good. He's been successful. Uh, he's in business. He's making money. And he's messing around on you. So you get divorced. And you say to your lawyer, I want alimony and futuro. And your lawyer goes, ah, it's hard to get. And you say, well, and the lawyer goes, what do you want to be? What do you want to grow up to be? And you say, I want to grow up to be a lawyer. And your lawyer goes, eh, I don't think that's a good idea. And you go, no, no, I really want to do that. <laughs> so you need rehabilitative alimony. You uh, are 18. You've got to go to four years of college. You've got to go through three years of law school. You've got uh, several months where you can't do anything in your life but study for and take the bar. So you're going to need about seven and a half years of rehabilitative alimony so that you can get a job skill so that you can start earning something approximating what he makes. Okay? There's a whole lot more to it than that, but that's the nub. We went along several years thinking, well, that covers almost all the situations, but it really didn't. And so they developed one more type called transitional alimony, okay? You, you're in a situation where you're getting divorced uh, and you go, I don't want to go to law school. I don't want to go to medical school. I don't want to uh, teach kids. I'm, I, I want to arrange flowers. I don't need to go to school for that but it's, I'm gonna need some money so that I can transition from living this wonderful lifestyle I'm living now to something more modest. And that's where transitional alimony comes in. With all these, there are a lot of factors to consider. They're set out in the statute. In this area, unlike property division, in alimony, fault can be considered. So this is one of the areas where we actually look at, well, why did the marriage break up? Was it because he's been messing around or was it because you keep putting flowers around the house and he's allergic to them and he's about to go into shock and die, okay? That's one of the things we consider in terms of fault. And that goes in to considering the various types of alimony along with the far too much other stuff for us to cover in this short presentation. If you want to know more about divorce, go to aboutdivorce.com, our website, and start picking out little sections to read. Even better, call a lawyer. This is Larry Rice at 526-6701. Thank you for listening.